Hello everyone, welcome to the Integrated Math Module 2 Paper 1, 2018. Okay, if you like this video, like and subscribe, share with your friends. The exam is very soon, so let's try to help as many persons as possible. Okay, starting from question 16. At a lumber yard, a set, a saw is set to cut wood to lengths of 400 centimeters long. Assuming that X represents the length of a piece of wood in centimeters, a sample of 10 lengths of wood gave the these following results. So, we need to find the mean. The mean is simply the average. So if we add all these values and then divide by the number of these the number of values we have, then we would get 3998 divided by 10 and that will give us 399 divided by 399.8. Choice B. Question 17. It refers to the following table which gives grouped frequency distribution of heights to the nearest centimeter of students in our classroom. The mode, we need to find mode. So the mode is simply the highest value or the highest peak in any distribution. In this case, the highest peak of, of occurrence is 107 to 108. So that is the choice B. Okay. Let's quickly move on. Question 18. An estimate of the average height to one, no, an estimate to the median height to one decimal place is, okay, so the median is simply the middle value if it's even, but if it's odd, then that would be the addition of the two middle values divided by two, okay. In this case, we have 107, or no, 108 and 109 as the middle values, we we'll add them, we get 108. <coughs> We get 217 divided by 2, that's 108 point, approximately 3. So that is D. Okay, question 19. For a normal distribution of x approximately n mu of sigma squared, the z value for an x value greater than mu is always... <clears throat> so if we, if we remember, <clears throat> distributions come in three different shapes. The negatively skewed, where the x values are as they progress along gets higher in range or the no skew which are evenly distributed along the whole um, graph or if it's positively skewed where the early values of x actually see the highest range okay in this case our question is saying that the z value <coughs> the z value for an x value greater than mu so if the x value is greater than the function of it then that means that the original first couple of, uh, of integrations will be the highest but as soon as mu begins to get larger the x value will deteriorate or decrease in size with respect to the mu okay so that will mean that it is c okay question 20 <clears throat> which of the following graphs represents a positive risk as i said before it is b okay 23 21 sorry which of the following is not a characteristic of a normal distribution? So as I showed, a distribution typically had a new skew, a negative or a positive. But what you didn't see was that it actually has a tail, right? Each of them have a tail. Tail. Some of them are long tails or short tails or even tails. But they have tails, okay? Now the question is saying um, that one of these are not true the one that cannot be true is that they have an indefinite length of course they have a definite length because if they didn't the graph wouldn't be plotted properly the, the curve is symmetric about the average because at, at the average the, <clears throat> you basically have symmetry across the negative and positive on opposite sides the total area has to be equal to one because that's a probability constant and the value of the average is always greater than the amount of persons that are not average. Okay? So that's why it has to be D. That is not true. Question 22. Two letters are to be chosen at random without replacement from the word random. In how many ways can this be done if the order does not matter? Okay? The order does not matter. So we're going to use the NCR function. Simply going to say the n divided by the r times the n minus r plug in the value n is equal to 6 because that's the amount of letters we have in random 
and R, which is two, because those two va two two letters can be any random two letters as long as they're two. So when we properly um, calculate it, we then substitute the values into the equation. We found that it is thirty divided by two, so therefore the answer is B. Twenty-three. The x approximate b i n of n p if the mean is three times the variance. The probability is p. Okay. Let's slowly go through this question. All right. So let me show you the first steps. So let me explain these. So this is for a binomial, binomial expression. So we have terms that we need to understand. The t, the mean. The mean is simply the average value, as we said. So if the average value of n, or if n, the number of values you have, times the probability of that value being chosen, that's the average value. Okay? The probability now is the average value divided by the amount of values you have. That's what this is saying. Now, if you want to say, well, how many values do we have that is not being... Um, a high probability or it is variated from the actual mean we're going to use the equation that says sigma prime is equal to NP so this is saying sigma sigma prime is equal to NP times 1 times P that's the variance in this question they said that the variance <coughs> they said that the, um, the mean is 3 times the variance so if we said no the mean which is this is three times NP because that is the what the variance is times times one minus P divided by N <clears throat> right we're going to have binomial being equal to N equal two if we transpose correctly okay so after we have the N equal two we're gonna say that the probability therefore is the three when you substitute the N equal to here 3 times 2 times 1 minus p expand further we get 6 p times 1 minus p okay but where did we get the 2 p from if you realize we still had the negative n i mean the divided n we transpose it off because we want to get this into a proper function of what probability can be so after we multiply throughout we're trying to expand the 6 p minus 6 6p times 1 minus p we're going to get a squared value of p okay then after we work it out we simply get 2p and we carry it over back the, p, the, the, the double p over equal sign and we are left with p is equal to 2 minus 3 so let me recap quickly just to explain it as best as possible so this is probability as i said this is mean mm -hmm. The variance is var is given by the the basic u times one p. Uh oh, I think I messed up here. Uh, one second. Uh mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So basically. We are trying to find a probability of something we cannot know because the variance is not known. So how do you find two unknowns? Firstly, you have to know what is the formula of that unknown. The formula is simply u times 1p. Okay? And after we know the formula, we declare that we're trying to find p from this formula. So if we're trying to find p from an unknown formula, we are going to say that 3 times the variance, 3 times the variance, divided by n, where n is equal to 2, because after you transpose it correctly, then all you have to do is factorize, and when you have a proper value for it, you check, and you see that it is c. Okay, let's move on. Question 24. A company offers to sponsor three sporting teams in Barbados with footgear. The table below summarizes footgear sizes according to sport teams. What is the probability that a footgear selected at a random from the football team is not a size 12? 
So, the probability is simply the number of outcomes in A divided by the number of outcomes S. Right? So, if we simply said that um, we want to find a foot gear randomly from the football team, then we need to know the total of outcomes. Okay? There will be 17. Now we can focus on the range that they gave us, not size 12. So, there will be 3, two, there will be three and 2. So 5 divided by 7 and that would be 0 0.29 which is A. Okay? Question 25. Foot gear is selected from among three teams. Probability that it is a size 9. So now they want us to find a size 9. Okay. So the size 9 now would be, let me check, 5 divided by 19. So let's see now. So basketball, so they're asking you that it is a size 9, a definite range. And the total. So it's 5 divided by 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is a choice C. Okay, 26. <coughs> it refers to our following table which shows age and weight of five persons. A scatter plot of weight against age will show. Okay. So remember, a positive skew. So we're going to simply just trace the trend. What is the trend? You have 45, 61, and 68. Are these values higher than the later range, 36 and 40? Yes. So that would mean it's a positive skew. Okay. 26 is D there. Okay. 27. Okay. A school has three teaching vacancies to fill. Four males and five females apply for the position. In how many ways can three applicants be selected to fill the vacancy? So, you get, you, you, you still use the same formula as I stated before, where you have a subset in the set that you are given. So we're going to say, plugging in the values of 9, because they said that's, a that's the amount you have, divided by 3 times 9 minus 3. So we're saying that R is equal to 3, because that's the amount of applicants that we can fill for the position. And then 9 is the total because we had 4 males and 5 females applying in the first place. Okay, When we work that out clearly, we get um, 9 divided by 3 times 6. And I think that is 84. Okay, That is D. Question 28. What is the probability that 2 males and 1 female are selected to fill the vacancy? Okay. So... You use the same formula in CR, then you're going to say, well, if I have probabilities inside probabilities, I first need to find the inside probabilities. So what is the chance I have two males out of the four males? So that would be four of two. Okay. Then now, if I have one female out of the five total females, that would be five of one. Okay. But what? After that, no, that is a probability in itself divided by the general probability of 3 being even selected. So, therefore, it is 9 out of 3. When you do that correctly, you get 5 divided by 14. And that, in other words, the combination of 2 boys out of 4 times 1 girl out of 5, all divided by 3 people out of 9. Okay, so that is A. Question 29. Which of the following types of relationships exist between two variables when a correlation coefficient of r is equal to 0 0.47 is obtained? Okay, so the value of r is always between 1 and negative 1. So exactly of the, the exact value of r is 1 and negative 1. So as I said, if it is a negatively skewed, you're going to have a strong downhill relationship. But if it's positive, it's going to be a strong uphill such as this one. So if it is a 0 0.47, that's a positive 0 0.47, it's going to be a weak or a moderate uphill. Alright, so that would be D. Okay, Alright, question 30. Okay, question 30. The amount of spending money given to five students to attend an overseas conference is most appropriately represented using, alright, so let's just explain what a stem and leaf diagram is because this is knowledge you need to know. A stem and leaf diagram basically re refers to the left values being the stem 
and the right values being the leaves. What does this mean? It means that these values are the con are the values that may have been the original um, left side. Because if you have multiple values all starting with 4, like 45, 46, 47, you can call that 4 the constant. Okay? So then you're going to say 4 and 1 is 41, 5 and 2 is 52, 5 and 7 is 57. So that is the stem and leaf plot. Okay? Now, the it couldn't be a stem and leaf plot because you have um, money involved and you need to find 5 students and how much they will spend. Okay? So it couldn't be a stem and leaf. The, 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 the line graph now visualize money or any y constant over time so it couldn't be that as well because you have more than one line and that would be in confusing to understand it couldn't be the histogram either because histogram measures frequency so if you're talking frequency that's how much um, more money one person would have spent over a given time not how much the five persons spent properly it wouldn't accurately show you all the details you will need to know because each area of these represent the f the frequency or the air or, or the, the the gradient of each okay so the most accurately used one will be the pie chart because the pie chart shows things in variances and sizes the amount of money given to five students to attend and oversee that shows you um, um with respect to each other okay so i hope this video has been helpful please like and subscribe and so and, and watch out for further content good luck in all your exams